Hello YouTube, it's Krosama, and here I have for you today is the SD Cross Silhouette Nightingale. Now, I did not do any kind of detail work, paint, or anything to this, I didn't even put the stickers on there, uh, because I'm about to go ahead and paint it. Now, uh, this is going to be my entry into the Gumpla Networks uh, SD contest. So, I am going to be taking a little bit of time with this thing and just make it as nice and beautiful as I possibly can. Uh, but before I get into uh, the paint job and everything, uh, which might be a little bit longer than what I was expecting because I really want to go ahead and start moving on to some other projects so um, I'm still gonna be doing this piece by piece every single day but uh, I really thought I was gonna get this done a little bit earlier but uh, nonetheless I want to go ahead and do a full review of this uh, kind of more handle handling it a little bit more rough uh, than what I would have with uh, a full paint job uh, just so that way I can go ahead and show you uh, the comparisons of it in the SD form as well as in the uh, cross silhouette form. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this kit in its normal SD form. Alright guys, so taking a look at the head first, uh, the head looks really good. Um, I mean, I know I never built many SDs, so I don't really know uh, as far as like how detailed a lot of SDs can can be essentially. Um, but when it comes to the Nightingale, I've always wanted the uh, the one in one hundred, but I decided to um, not get it right now because the price is a little bit steep, and I just don't really have the shelf room right now. But I do like this because this is fairly you know fairly small. It doesn't really take up a lot of space, but it looks so impactful. Uh, when it comes to the rest of like my Xeon kits, um, but you know just looking at the head itself. I think the head looks fantastic um, You know, I, I never really noticed the the design that much um, I, I, I don't know. I think it looks really amazing uh, really fantastic uh, very beetle like in so many aspects um, Now underneath right there. You do see that little uh, mono eye, which is going to be a clear green piece um, There's no stickers for the head part. Um, it's just kind of all you know what you see right here uh, so yeah, the articulation is not too bad. Um, you can kind of like move left and move right. Uh, not really much in the up and down uh, department, but overall it does not look that bad. Okay, so looking at the chest, now there is going to be a sticker, uh, basically going to be this little red one right here, which should go right there on the front. But since it's uh, a raised uh, part, I can go ahead and just uh, paint that, maybe do like a reverse wash or something uh, right there. But it does look pretty good. Um, overall, I love the, the different color separation with like the white, especially like the little uh, chest Vulcans right there. Uh, all the gray innards, uh, you got some like piping going down, like some hydraulics uh, right inside um, in the body. So overall, I think that looks really good. Um, I, I think whenever I do paint this, I'm not going to have too much trouble when it comes to just overall paints. Uh, should be fairly simple, uh, maybe a little bit of masking here and there, but uh, for the most part, it shouldn't be really too difficult. Now when it comes to articulation, this isn't going to move that much. Uh, you're basically going to get that much of a movement right there. So uh, unfortunately, that's going to be very, very limited, but I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to be uh, once we go ahead and add that cross silhouette frame. All right, and looking at the arms, uh, nothing really too special about these arms. They're on a little like you know, poly cap joints right here uh, on the inside. So the movement is kind of like what you would expect from, uh, I guess, either an SD or just anything with like this kind of poly cap joint. Uh, so nothing really too crazy right there. Uh, the arms are, uh, if it doesn't pop out, the arms are gonna be able to go about that much. Um, kind of just has like a little bit of rotation right here on the, uh, the bicep. So nothing really too spectacular is going on right here but you do have some thrusters uh right inside uh, there on the shoulders so that's going to be fantastic go ahead and paint up and then you're going to have these little hands right here which are going to be on low poly caps as well so i'm kind of thinking about changing out these hands uh, i do have a whole bunch of different like you know bandai uh, extra hands um in my collection so i might use those but i'm still on the fence about that all right, so looking at the waist and legs, uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that there is a sticker, this is a little yellow one. This is actually supposed to go in the middle of the chest uh, right there where that kind of like beam cannon is. Um, that's what I'm kind of, you know, kind of guessing it is, is a little uh, particle beam cannon that's right, right in the middle of the chest. Uh, but yeah, there's a sticker right there for that. Now this front skirt with the, uh, the cross thruster is all gonna be one part with some white parts that are underneath. And then this whole back piece is just gonna be one solid piece uh, kind of just going all the way around. Now the stickers that's supposed to go right there on the front skirts are essentially going to be uh, this one that's supposed to go right there. And then these two white pieces are supposed to go right there as well. 
Now looking on the legs, the legs are basically going to be on poly polycap joints right inside there and uh, also on the feet. So nothing really too crazy when it comes to the movement. Um, I mean, it, they're just like little ball joints. So um, basically just going to rotate all the way around and the same thing for the feet. So we, I just would not expect any kind of crazy range of movement at all. Now underneath it, you're going to have these two fuel tanks, which I think look fantastic. Um, so definitely kind of excited to go ahead and paint that. Now you're going to have the stand that basically connects right inside here, but this is going to be more used for uh, the cross silhouette. But uh, if you're not in the cross silhouette form, uh, you can definitely just store that right inside here. And it's not going to be any kind of issue uh, because he's going to be able to uh, keep himself up. And you are going to have some uh, fuel tanks right here, but underneath, they look pretty terrible, at least in my opinion. Uh, but fortunately, I don't think I'm ever going to have it in a, in a position to where people will actually see underneath it, because uh, you're really just going to see it from the front. Um, so I'm not really too worried about underneath it, because I was thinking about like getting some putty and try doing putty for the first time, but honestly, I'm just like, you know what, it, it looks okay without it. Now the backpack also looks pretty cool. They got some uh, details right inside there as well as all the thrusters. So that's gonna be pretty exciting to go ahead and paint up. And when it comes to the little wing binders right here that, have, that basically has all the funnels attached, uh, you get a pretty decent range of movement because they're gonna be on like little ball joints. So uh, you can definitely move these around how you want. Now the funnels can actually come out and you're gonna have like these uh, little peg holes right inside there. And this, you know, even even if this was here or not, this is what I'm gonna be doing. So I'm gonna use these little like uh, clear pipes and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, basically funnel them from here to uh, the funnel um, and just kind of have them kind of out and about um, as, as pretty much just deployed. Uh, so that's kind of like my plan on what I'm gonna do with these. Uh, and I do have some other effect parts I'm gonna go ahead and attach to it as far as like actual um, like uh, Maybe some beams coming out of the little uh, funnels. I think that might be pretty cool, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and test out the waters and just, you know, one by one, see how it all looks. Now when it comes to the weapons, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is gonna be the shield. Now the shield also is gonna have a sticker that uh, should go right here, uh, which is going to be the Xeon symbol. But I have these little MS emblem release. So I'm hoping that this is gonna work pretty good. Uh, so I'm basically gonna go ahead and uh, paint these up and then uh, you know kind of cement them on the front. So, I mean, not all of them, but just uh, this one right here in particular. I'll put that right here on the front and I think it's gonna look pretty good. I can't really do one for the chest because it's, it's curved and I'm, I'm not really gonna try and like bend this for that. Uh, but I think one of these uh, right in the dead center of the, um, the shield is gonna look pretty decent. And the way you attach it is just gonna be in the back of the arm on either arm, so um, if you don't pop the arm out. But overall, uh, yeah, uh, it looks pretty good. The uh, shoulder's gonna get in the way a little bit, so you really just have to watch out for that. But it, I mean, other, other than that, it's gonna be fine. So next we're gonna have the beam rifle. Honestly, I don't like the way it looks. Um, it just looks pretty bad. <laughs> so I'm kind of looking to see if I can replace this with something, but it's kind of like I gotta find something that's gonna be right for the hand. Um, if not, I gotta like try and mod a weapon that's not gonna be like, I don't want something that's gonna be overly too big uh, for the mobile suit, but something that's just gonna be just right for it. But I think this is a little bit too small. So something just a little bit bigger than this, um, but I'm kind of I'm like just looking around, see if I can find something currently. All right, so that is the SD form. Uh, the next thing we're gonna take a look at, we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the, the basically the frame itself. Uh, kind of just show you the articulation with, by, you know, with the frame by itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, fuse them together and I'll show you the articulation with it with the frame. And here it is. Well, uh, pretty much this is the white frame. Uh, there is the gray frame that you know recently came out, which I do have, uh, but I'm gonna be using that for uh, the Zaku, and in fact, it really doesn't matter because I'm, I'm going to be painting this anyways. Uh, so if you are deciding to paint a kit, then it really doesn't matter which uh, color frame you get. But if you're not painting, then I would kind of, you know, definitely look at what mobile suit you're getting, uh, and then choose the appropriate inner frame uh, with a cross silhouette. Uh, color. So as you can see, uh, they all do come with a GM head. Uh, I, I guess it's cool, but there's not a GM body, uh, and you could kind of put it on the RX-78 uh, body, but I think that's just a little bit weird, or you can just kind of like get some uh, old SD GMs, and maybe just kind of like Frankenstein uh, your own, you know, little cross silhouette GM, but 
Um, I, I'm just not into the head at all. So when it comes to the articulation of the frame itself, uh, looking at the shoulders, these little parts actually come out. So you can kind of tell right there, uh, there's a pretty big difference when it comes to, um, you know, like the little width of the shoulders. So I don't know if that's like a functionality that you can do within the kit itself, or they have to be extended or uh, kind of condensed depending on the kit that you're putting this on. Then you're also gonna have this on like a little ball joint right there, and then this is gonna be on like a little ball joint. Uh, so pretty much everything on a ball joint, and then this kind of just rotates uh, right here. So pretty good range of movement, but uh, with armor on, it's definitely gonna be limited. And then the waist is also gonna be on like a little ball joint. So it's a little bit loose, but uh, once everything is put on, uh, shouldn't have any kind of issues with that. And looking at the waist, uh, basically more uh, ball joint. So this is gonna be a little bit more limited because uh, I mean the legs aren't really gonna be able to go out that much, but this is an SD kit with a kind of like Frankenstein, not Frankenstein, but like a, a very condensed minor inner frame. Uh, but overall, it doesn't. It, I mean, it doesn't look bad at all. So uh, the knees can basically bend uh, fairly well. It's about a 90 degree bend. And then the feet right here, uh, the ankle is going to have a little ball joint, so rotation right there on the ankle. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and slap the roof of this nightingale because we can fit so much cross silhouette in it. And here it is with the cross silhouette frame. Uh, so you can definitely tell that there are some noticeable differences. Uh, some of that being the height overall. Uh, the height definitely is increased, uh, mainly just in the uh, the legs. Uh, the waist, I don't think it really adds too much length, uh, especially with uh, the body as well. Uh, I think it's fairly fairly the same. Uh, maybe I'm just kind of like mistaken, uh, but that's just kind of like the way it looks to me. The, it's mostly going to be the legs that's going to give it all that extra height. Um, it looks like he's giving it about like maybe an inch uh, extra. Uh, now the arms are also going to have that extra length as well, which I think looks fantastic. Uh, so once again, I am using the uh, the white frame, so it may not be good on this. I, I personally don't mind. Like if I was doing a, a straight build. Obviously, I would you know go with the gray, but um, if all I had was the white, you know, to be honest, this wouldn't look uh, that bad to me. Um, but you know, for the most part, I would definitely recommend going with the uh, the gray or whatever your preferred uh, inner frame is going to be. And you're also going to have leftover uh, inner frame parts from the basic SD, so um, you can still put this to good use if you have like an extra kit lying around that you kind of want to give it inner frame. Um, you know, definitely use it, but uh, to me, this is just something I'm, I'm kind of just putting in the uh, the bin, and maybe in the future I will have use for it. All right, so looking at the uh, the articulation, um, not really much has changed. The head kind of just does a little bit more range of movement uh, than before because it seems like the neck joint uh, kind of just got a little, little increased, uh, so that's not bad. Now, I also f uh, failed to mention previously that the mono eye can actually move back and forth, so if you want to go ahead and move it uh, pretty much right to left or any anything of the sort, uh, you can definitely do so. All right, now looking at the arm, uh, the joints right here and the shoulders, that, to me, that doesn't look too much different. Uh, I guess maybe you're gonna get a little bit extra movement, but uh, for the most part, this is gonna be on like a little ball joint, and uh, this part inside here is going to be able to extend just a little bit, like I mentioned uh, before. And then looking at the elbow joint right there, uh, basically is going to be able to move up about that much so you're gonna get a 90 degree bend uh, right there for the uh, the elbow joint now for the waist nothing's really changed uh, still is gonna be very limited but if you kind of like pop it out a little bit you can definitely get a bigger range of movement so that's not too bad but uh, it's kind of just like hanging on the ball joint at that point so you gotta kind of like snap it right back in place uh, like so so right here for the legs, uh, it's also going to be able to uh, basically swivel right here uh, on the um, the base of the leg. Now if it doesn't pop out of the ball joint, then it'll be fine. Uh, but it looks pretty good overall, and it's going to have a slight bend about that much. So you're not getting too much of a bend, but hey, some articulation is better than no articulation. And then you're also going to have the ball joint right here. So this is just kind of exposing more of the inner skirt, but that doesn't look too bad. So uh, overall, I mean, I'm just going to watch out for pain because I got to paint all this and make sure there's no uh, empty spots but uh, you know it really shouldn't be that bad and then the last big thing is I uh, just got the little kickstand right here so that way uh, it can actually stand on its own uh, if you don't want to put it on a, uh, a stand 
Okay, so looking at the comparisons with uh, other SD Gundams, um, I don't really have too many, so this is just one of the ones I have, which is a BB, uh, BB Senshi. So overall, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's really the binders that's going to make it have more of a width and kind of give it that extra, um, you know, height over uh, the other SD. So overall, um, I think they're almost very similar in terms of length, uh, or I guess like the height of them, but the width, I mean, the Nightingale is definitely going to take the cake. So here it is compared next to the high grade RX-78-2, which, um, I mean, with the binders, it's definitely going to be at around the same height. Uh, but if you look at the base of the head, uh, definitely the high grade is going to be taller. But it just seems like there's a lot more going on with the SD than what there was uh, with this particular high grade. Uh, not to go, not to say like all high grades are not going to be as good quality as the SDs or SDs going to be better. Um, I just think that, you know, it's kind of funny that this thing has so many great details as an SD uh, when compared to something that came out, what, uh, about five, six years ago. So I, just, I think that's kind of funny, but, um, you know, overall, the um, the differences are going to be night and day when it comes to proportions as well as uh, just the height and everything. So what do you guys think of the kit? Overall, my pros are it is fantastic to look at. It has a lot of great surface detail, amazing color separation, the cross silhouette frame, it just makes it pop so much more. Uh, one of those kits I definitely wish that came out uh, when I first got into Gundams because this would have made me appreciate SDs a hell of a lot more. So when it comes to the cons, I really can't think of too much except for the uh, underneath the fuel tanks when it comes to the hollow parts. That's really about it. The weapon being a little bit more hollow and kind of like uninspired. Uh, that's really about it as far as like what I can say maybe about cons. Uh, other than that though, I think the kit looks fantastic and it, it just has so much potential to be even better with just some proper paint and detailing. But that's it for me guys. So overall, I just want to go ahead and just end on this note. If you have not built an SD Gundam or you haven't built any of the cross silhouette you know frames I would definitely recommend you pick this one up uh, this is actually my first one even though I own all of them currently uh, I've never built any of them until just now so this is definitely going to be a, um, a learning experience when it comes to painting them and masking them because I never painted an SD gun them before but overall I think it looks fantastic and I I don't know I just I can't recommend it anymore so other than that guys definitely thanks for watching uh, be sure to rate comment subscribe and I'll post the video of it being fully painted in the near future I'll see you guys later bye bye